continuing on now. This uh, next section, we are dealing with um, Nazi uh, psychology research specifically. Um, a lot of uh, mind control or targeted individuals, conspiracy theories, um, they talk a lot about uh, Wilhelm Wundt. Now, he was a, a, a German, he was basically the founder of psychology in the modern sense of psychology. He was a German teacher at, uh, in Leipzig, which after World War II was occupied by the Soviet Union as part of East Germany. Um, before the war, it was just uh, another German town. Uh, it's known for its university there, the University of Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig, um, Wilhelm Wundt established uh, an institute for experimental psychology there. Uh, some important things to understand about uh, some concepts that Bunt uh, gave us is to uh, some of these. Some of Bunt's most important topics are uh, process theory. Mental phenomena are changing processes of consciousness. Uh, psychophysical parallelism. Certain mental processes regularly correspond to certain physical processes. Figuratively, they are parallel to one another. A perception, which was based on Leibniz. The process in which the elementary sensory impressions pass into self-consciousness, whereby individual aspirations, striving, volitional acts play an essential role. A perception has a range of theoretical assumptions on the integrative process of consciousness. The selective control of attention is an elementary example of such cognitive, emotional, and motivational integration. Now, another, um, later on in Germany, there would be this founding of a, a, a psychology called Gestalt. Now, Gestalt is a perceptual primary defining the parts it was composed from rather than being a secondary quality that emerges from those parts. A Gestalt psychology or a Gestaltism is a philosophy of mind of the Berlin School of Experimental Psychology. The fundamental principle of Gestalt perception is the law of pregnance, in the German language, pithiness, which says that we tend to order our experience in a manner that is regular, orderly, symmetrical, and simple. Gestalt psychologists attempt to discover refinements of the law of pregnancy, and this involves writing down laws that hypothetically allow us to predict the interpretation of sensation, what are often called Gestalt laws. As neural weapons is an interference in Gestalt, research in this area is directly re related whether by intention or dual purpose with the developments of neural weapons. Later, researchers in neuroweapons, such as John Norsen, worked with ideas of quantum consciousness. Similarities between Gestalt phenomena and quantum mechanics have been pointed out by, among others, chemist Anton Amon, who commented that similarities between Gestalt perception and quantum mechanics are on a level of a parable, yet may give us insightful, yet might also be insightful nonetheless. Now, where does Wundt and Gestalt uh, psychology come together is in um, uh, Felix Kruger. Felix Kruger um, is not really Gestalt. Um, he's, he derives part of his ideas in psychology from Wundt and part of his ideas in psychology from Gestalt. But the important thing to understand is that Kruger, after Wundt dies in 1917, he becomes the, the leader of the Institute for Experimental Psychology. Now, Felix Kruger is uh, he's a Nazi. He becomes a Nazi. He's enthusiastically Nazi. Uh, he's all for National Socialism. Um, with Kruger, in the lead of the Institute for Experimental Psychology, which was the first place ever to actually do experiments to derive what psychology, the psychological processes of the human mind. 
It was first done here, it was, uh, you know, and then it came to the United States and went to other places. Um, Felix Kruger, interestingly, um, in 1908, he went to Argentina and he established a, 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 an institute for exper experimental psychology in Argentina, which presages many Nazis later on going to Argentina after the war. But uh, already there is already a connection between Argentina and uh, Nazi Germany uh, later on. Um, one of the things that I want to talk to talk about is one of uh, Kruger's students, and his name was um, Heinrich Verd. Uh, Heinrich Verd, interestingly, was from South Africa. He was uh, an Afrikaner from South Africa. He was um, a member of the National Socialist National Party in South Africa. He's known as the architect of apartheid. Now, one of the things that he was um, um, doing was he, as a student, his background is in psychology. He was also a student at Leipzig, and he was also uh, directly under the mentorship of Kruger, and in 1926, he uh, had his uh, PhD. But Burr treated the emotions as phenomena which could be isolated and evoked, re rendering them measurable and open to manipulation. But um, <laughs> we could keep going on this word stuff. Borod, um, like I said, he was the founder of apartheid. I mean, the ideas of apartheid came from him. Uh, racial exclusion, racial um, segmentation, this is all very national socialist. Uh, it's very much part of the Nazi ideology. Um, one thing to uh, mention about uh, the, or the Institute under Kruger is uh, Kruger's theoretical conceptualization of holistic psychology encouraged the absorption of both Volkish ideologies and nationalist ones. Holistic psychology was closely interwoven with an ideological and political undercurrent that operated in the context of wholes and transcended the psychology of the individual who the community perceived as a Volk. Um, Although working in different fields, our efforts aimed at an understanding of community life, especially that of Volk. It comes as no surprise, therefore, that both Kruger himself and some of his assistants, such as Volkelt and Durkheim, were involved in right-wing policies as early as the 1920s. The, the Psychological Institute was regarded as a Volkish cell, uh, um, a Volk cell. Um, And another uh, student of Kruger's was uh, a person uh, named Eric Wolfhart. Um, Wolfhart, in 1925, came up with the concept of uh, actual genies, and it's, it's known as actualism. And to uh, read a little bit about this, actualism is a term derived from Gestalt psychology, which refers to the emergence of a perception from more complex holistic preforms or the process of differentiation of perceptual contents. If the term is limited to human perception, the actual fact that a complex object is not immediately captured completely, but is recorded in a single step in a process. These steps do not occur deliberately in a wider sense. One can also describe other psychological processes in this way. For example, the emergence of emotional excitements from the first impression of a situation Several steps have passed through until one realizes the full experience. The emergence of emotions can take place differently depending on the triggering event and person. The development of a possible envy or jealousy feeling of a little boy on a newborn brother runs differently than the frightening reaction when driving when an obstacle appears directly in front of the car. 
Now, this research would later uh, contribute to the understanding of how to manipulate these processes. And in terms of, uh, one thing to keep in mind, again, um, with the rise of Nazism is uh, in neuroweapons, we have this term known as uh, nootropics. Now, nootropics are, uh, are usually drugs. They can also be viruses that mess with your thought processes. The, the rise of Nazism is directly related with one nootropic uh, drug, uh, and that is methamphetamines. At the same time, IG Farben, which is a major um, chemical manufacturer in Germany, one of the, the main industrial mites behind Nazism at, during the Nazi regime, at the same time, IG Farben was created in 1925, methamphetamines, heroin, and morphine under the work of Otto Friedrich Ranke. He introduced methamphetamines into the Wehrmacht, that's the war machine, uh, the, the Nazi German uh, army, receiving funding from the Rockefeller Foundation. His PhD dissertation, the rectifier resonance theory, an extension of the, the Hellhoek resonance theory of hearing by physical examination of the cochlear fluid oscillations, which is similar to uh, many, um, my, a lot of research in Euro weapons in, in the Soviet Union, like uh, Kaczynski in 1931. Um, no, Ranke was a member of the SA. This is uh, the Storm and Batuan, the Stormtroopers. Eventually, in 1939, the widespread use of these drugs would lead the Minister of Health, Leo Conti, to declare that the entire German nation seemed addicted. Now, there is there is no question that we are seeing this exact same problem in the United States today, with um. I mean, <laughs> I am from Ohio. I'm from a very poor town in Ohio. I go to Ohio now, which previously was a nice working class uh, small town with uh, three factories surrounded by farms. Now, when you go there, you see um, just uh, people are addicted to these same methamphetamines. And we all know that there is a methamphetamine. There is. Um, an opioid addiction occurring in the United States today. But uh, continuing on with this, this bracket monthly topic, um, what were they, they were trying to do with these methamphetamines also was to create a super soldier. You, you'll hear this term a lot in terms of uh, um, enhancement. Neuroweapons can be used to degrade Neuroweapons can be used to enhance. Uh, what they were trying to do is create um, a super soldier. And it's interesting because the uh, Nazi attack is called the Blitzkrieg. And that's when they just, uh, you know, they Blitzkrieged into uh, Poland and overtook the Polish through like this really fast and all really fast aggressive action. And this is a, uh, you will we'll also read about this in uh, an American colonel's work named Boyd who takes the same concept but changes the names a little. And this was the, uh, Boyd was actually who uh, Dick Cheney brought in to uh, create the war plan for the first Gulf War against uh, the state of Iraq. Um, let's see what else we can talk about here. Uh, in 1926, uh, another student of Kruger's was, uh, oh yeah, we're going back to Burwood. I'm sorry, I got a little little uh, mixed up here, but back to Burward, just some more stuff on Burward. After his studies in Leipzig, he returned to his native South Africa and became a member of the Fascist National Party, like I said. Um, he wrote in 1926, a method for the experimental production of emotions. He was um, the, the chair of the Applied Psychology and Psychotechnique at the University of Stellenbosch. Um, to quote one scholar writing about him, Hendrik Bird, in the Leipzig School of Psychology, investigating Moody's allegations regarding the formative influence of German intellectuals on African nationalism. It makes sense to concentrate on Bird's time in Leipzig because the psychological institute there is the most likely site of the alleged political influence from German scholars. 
It was the Leipzig psychologists who exhibited brightest political leanings, unlike their colleagues in Berlin and Hamburg, none of whom were drawn by radical nationalism. Borowitz studied psychology and philosophy at Stellenbosch and wrote a master's thesis on each of the subjects in 1922. From 1923, he was a lecturer in psychology at Stellenbosch. He wrote his PhD thesis entitled The Blunting of the Emotions Based on Laboratory Experiments. He received his doctorate cum laude from Stellenbosch University in 1924 and was awarded a $150 pound cruel and gray British scholarship to study abroad. He spent three semesters in Germany from 1926 to 1927 and three months in the USA. While at Leipzig, he also studied under Richard Pfeiffer on the psychopathology of children and youth, as well as a course on psychological therapy and hypnosis. So once again, we see hypnosis coming into this. Ford, being the one-time prime minister of apartheid South Africa, does raise the possibility that his research became state-funded and underwritten. I don't think that's really much of a question that the South African apartheid government would have um, be underwriting neural weapon and neural warfare. But um, one other interesting person is Volkelt. Um, in 1926, Volkelt became an assistant professor. He and Graf Durkheim Mottmartin were the earliest and most outspoken adherents of National Socialism at the Leipzig School. Volkelt became a member of the NSDAP as early as 1932, one year before Hitler uh, came to power. Uh, clear evidence that he joined the party out of con conviction rather than opportunism. Under Kruger, the Leipzig Institute adapted very quickly to the new regime, and some of its members publicly claimed the National Socialist assumption of power. Kruger himself had been an exponent of the radically nationalist and vocal end of right wing for many years already. In 1935, he became rector of the university, but was forced to resign by the Nazis by making the faux pas of calling uh, one Jewish researcher, uh, Heinrich Hertz. It's interesting that he's bringing up Hertz in this situation. Heinrich Hertz was a Jew, and he called him a noble Jew, and he lost his job after saying that. But Another interesting uh, Leipzig uh, researcher is Friedrich Sander, who in 1942 uh, he was a member of the Nazi party. Uh, you will see that all these professors continue teaching after the war. I mean, it's not like they're getting rid of them. Uh, but in his work, um, he published with Kruger, Gestalt, and Sin. Uh, he also published Functional Structure, Power of Experience and Form in 1942, and worked with Wolfhard on actual genes. The emergence of a perception from more complex holistic reforms of process of differentiation of perceptual content, which we know, you know, if you're going to build a neural weapon, you have to be able to decipher these things. Sounder founded the School of Genetic Holistic Psychology with Felix Kruger. Based on experimental perceptual investigations, he developed the concept of actual genesis, emotion which described the process of creating a creative experience and claimed that the gestalt qualities are preceded by so-called full qualities. Oh. Also known was the Sanderish figure in the optical illusion, Sanders illusion. In the period of Nazi rule, Sanders saw in holistic psychology a contribution to the so-called reorganization of national life. In 1962, he presented a collection of the works on holistic psychology <clears throat> and later, he was found to have committed fraud in his research and had actually undermined Wolfhard. He took his research from Wolfhard, basically. It was plagiarizing. Right. Um, one last researcher I would like to mention is actually Rudert. I'm going to skip over work. Johannes Rudert um, was. Uh, uh, a researcher at Heidelberg. He was an army psychologist, and the interesting about thing about him is he developed typology and characterology. Uh, the Wehrmacht hired him to assign officers to different um, skills, and we also saw this in the Soviet Union, too, where you would take a test and you would be assigned a job or put on to an education pathway based on these, these characterological tests and typology tests. 
1935, he applies for habilitation at the Faculty of Philosophy in Leipzig with thesis typology and characterology to the problem of characterological classification. From 36 to 41, he was a senior armed psychologist at the psychological testing offices of the Reichswehr in Brunswick and Weisbaden. In 1941, he sent to the University of Leipzig, appointed associate professor of psychology, and he succeeded Philip Lurch as the deputy head of the Psychological Institute. This one, one area of research that is worthy of note of Rudert was his development in the characterological field, recruiting on talent for technical special services. He developed what became known as the film method, originally created by Philip Lersch, in which a subject was sent to a filming studio to be examined by a team of doctors from behind mirrors while being surreptitiously filmed. The examiner would be asked for his name and he would be told to go to be photographed and he would get ready in front of a mirror through which the filming occurred. This test took three days each of the subjects having two psychologists examine him. They pried for different emotional states in front of the mirror while being filmed. So this is like, um, and later on, we'll, we'll, we'll learn about the, uh, the visual recognition system or the automation of these um, neural weapons. So here we have like an early psychological exam, or, or example of this. Uh, next, we'll be discussing um, uh, Nazi um, biological research.